Graybeard. Welcome back to Graybeard's Garage. Got a little project today I'm doing on my Ultra Limited. Some of you know that I run cameras on the front and rear of my bike. Here I've got a GoPro 9 mounted on the center mount on my fairing on a little bracket that I made. There is a video of probably six, eight months ago making this bracket and it works quite well. Um, there's power cord coming into the camera. I've got one set up very similar on the back of the trunk. And the problem I'm running into is that if I use batteries in the cameras, they quit recording after about 45 minutes or so when the batteries run dead. So what I like to do is run them without the battery on the power cord, and that way they'll run until you run out of SD card space or you turn the power off. Well, the situation I'm running to, I'm riding, First of all, you have to start the bike up. Then you have to turn your camera on and start your recording. Because if you turn the camera on, as soon as you turn the key on, when you hit the start button, it disengages the power and it turns your camera off. So you have to turn around and start the camera all over again. But the real pain is, is when you come to a stop, you've got to remember to stop the recording at least. If not, go ahead and power down the camera. Because if not, if it's in the middle of recording and you shut the bike off, then it's going to possibly corrupt that last bit of footage and next time the camera comes on it'll say repairing previous video so that's something i want to avoid so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run direct battery power to the power outlets both front and rear of the bike uh, i've already got inside the fairing a secondary power outlet that is just tapped in to the current outlet which is mounted right here on the front of the fairing so this one here, I've changed this socket out to an actual cigarette lighter, as you can see that I have in there. And then my power that runs the camera and also runs the phone right here is going through the ignition source. So what I'm wanting to do is, like I said, have direct power from the battery at all times. That way, if I need to charge up my uh, phone or even one of the cameras, if I've got a camera in hand, I'll be able to have constant battery power so I can hook up the cameras or whatever needs to be charged, put it in the trunk, close it up, lock it and secure, and everything can charge while I'm away from the bike. So that's the goal for today, is I'm gonna run uh, power cores from the battery up into the fairing and also from the battery back to the trunk. And then also while I'm in it, uh, get out everything taken apart. I have got to replace this switch right here for the uh, fog lights or driving lights where you want to call them This uh, bike is about eight years old now and this switch caved in on me So I've got a replacement for that and to make it easy to replace that It's best that you pull the tank off so you have clearance to get this panel out to get in there to change that switch So that's the plan for today I just want to show you what I currently have set up. Here's my power cord for my phone. This one coming out for my camera. It goes into a USB-C to a 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter here. And these you can pick up at any AutoZone, any auto parts store, Amazon, Walmart. And it comes down here and I've got it tapped right here into the power cord that goes into the uh, stock power outlet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and do it separate it from here, protect these open ends, that way I'll probably leave about two or three inches on here that we have necessary at a later time, I can always put another accessory that I want key activated, whether it be lights or maybe even another uh, power outlet. 
Uh, I thought about at some point maybe putting a lighter up here in this part of the fairing because it's a little bit more accessible going down the road than being buried down up underneath here on the other side. So this is what I've got. This was zip tied up out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, probably replace all this electrical tape here that's holding all the cores together because I was losing contact at times going down the road and it was stopping my recording. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, change this all out and then I'm going to separate my wire here. See I've got a button connector here already so I might just go ahead and separate the wire right here and then tap in my new wire onto this. We'll run it down through the fairing. I'm going to pull the tank off route it along this wiring here, the stock harness, and once I get the tank off, you'll see there's a big plastic, I um, guess you could call it, holder that all the electrical and everything for the bike that goes up the fairing goes through. And I'm gonna run that wire through there, come out along something here on either side, not sure of which, then pull the cover here off the battery and end up connecting to the battery directly. grab a couple of zip ties that way I can secure this plug into place. All right, so here's what we got. This is the socket that I had up underneath the fairing. I'm gonna go ahead and reuse this one in the back because this gives me a ability to mount the plug. So this is the stock one that I had taken out of the fairing. Just for those of you that don't know, if you look onto the inside to tell whether or not you can use a cigarette lighter, if this insulator in the side of the socket, if it's not ceramic, do not put a cigarette lighter in there. It has to be ceramic. It's a good way to melt your bike down. If you stick a cigarette lighter in there and it gets too hot, that'll melt down and cause a short and cause all kinds of problems. So what I'm gonna do is use this stock one, get the wires connector on. I found this power cord here that I'm gonna use. Went ahead and sealed this up, a little bit of heat shrink, because this is two wires with a uh, protective coating on it. Went ahead and put some heat shrink on it to try to keep any water out, if any. I'm going to go ahead and use butt connectors and some heat shrink on them to try to keep water infiltration out. But I'm going to wrap this up really good and then we're going to run the wire through the fairing on back to the battery. I'm going to let you know I'm going to be running the positive lead on this white wire and the ground on the black just to keep it simple. And the center or copper lead on all these, whether you're using one like this, another, I have another one over there that has a screw stud. The center one is always your positive. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is now that I got this positive on there, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of tape on it. Unfortunately, my heat shrink isn't large enough to go over these crimp connectors. So I'm gonna run a little bit of electrical tape over this to help protect it from shorting out and also from any water infiltration. Okay, 
ground wire. I'm just going to seal this up real good. Alright, that should do there. Go ahead back up to the fairing and route my wire down. up here out of the way. It's not covering up my satellite in town. So that's good to go. So now I can continue running this power cord back towards the back. I'm gonna go ahead and wait until I get that tank off so I can get up on the other side real good. All right, so now they got the tank off, you can see you have this plastic contraption here that holds all your electrical. And <clears throat> what we're gonna do is pop this cover off. Here's my wire that I just routed. I'm gonna run it alongside the factory harness and come out right here by the battery. So there we go, I have it routed. Now I've got to pull the top off the battery or I might love to see uh, what power I can tap in here. I might actually do that right here. Looks like I've already got a fuse here. This is going to the horn. So I might be able to tap in right here on this fuse line so I don't have to hook directly to the battery. Awesome. All right, to make things easier for me, I already had a power lead coming directly off the battery here that I used for my aftermarket horn. So I made a power tap is what I did. This is the same gauge wire as was coming off the battery. I believe it may be eight gauge. <clears throat> and what this is, I'm gonna disconnect the battery lead from the fuse, put that battery lead back onto this spade, and this female spade goes back onto that fuse for the horn, and off of that comes this lead that I've included a 10 amp fuse for my power outlets. So let's stick that in place. So once I get this in, and I finish running my wires for my power outlets to be able to tap in right here, for fuse 10 amp power supply. So this end here goes directly into power to the battery. And this end here goes back over to the fuse. I have to trim the end of that plastic down just a little bit. So I get that trimmed, we'll fit up there nice and snug, and we'll tape everything up good so we're sealed from the water. We could go and buy fuse holders and things of that nature. I'll probably end up doing that eventually, but right now I'm just making do with what I got. And I got a lot of these spade connectors, no fuse holders, you work just fine for a fuse holder. Mm -hmm. So now that connects onto the fuse, so there's a 25 amp fuse going to my aftermarket horn, and here's now my power tap going directly to the battery for my outlets protected by a 10 amp fuse. So I'm going to go ahead and take this up here to keep the water out of the fuse. this ground wire over here to this backrest mount use one of those bolts as a ground point. Alright so I went ahead and ran my wire from my rear outlet, got it 
zip tied to the existing wire harness. <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is connect my grounds. these grounds underneath this bolt here for my backrest. And then for my power, I'm going to use a male spade connector that's going to connect here. connect here and I have fused 10 amp power source. Alright, so I'm going to connect my socket onto my power lead back here in the trunk and then we can uh, mount this ground and plug it in and see what happens. Alright, so here we have it. Here's the power splice that I showed you earlier. <clears throat> here we have 25 amp is going, uh, 25 amp fuse is going to my aftermarket horn and it splits off to my 10 amp power feed for my front and back outlets. The wiring here for the front outlet, the wiring here coming back for the rear outlet. I have myself plenty of uh, wire on this outlet right now once I decide where I'm going to route it off to. Uh, here's the outlet, I'm probably going to put some buffer on the back of it. See, I do have power, key is off, I have power. I uh, use a uh, phone power cord, USB-C, to power my uh, GoPro, which mounts onto the bracket right here. So, basically, I've done what I intended to here. Same thing on the front, power lead coming out. This is my front camera. Go ahead and plug that in real quick. They have power. 
All right, so now I don't have to worry about shutting my camera off before I turn the bike off. And I'll always have power to the cameras so I can run it without batteries. I know a lot of people, they like charge their phones when they're away from the bike. This gives you an opportunity to do that because you know all the factory uh, power outlets are keyed ignition. So do this one uh, if you like. Let me know how it goes for you. I'm eventually going to go back and get some actual fuse holders and do everything all nice and tidy. So I always do things once or twice until I get it to exactly the way I want it. Then I'll go back and do it properly. All right, thanks for joining me.